Hello everybody, Manix here. Got a teeny tiny little knife review for you right here. If you would like to see more knife reviews, knife locking mechanism videos, flashlight videos, EDC videos, etc., please feel free to subscribe. Click that little bell notification button, it really means a lot. Uh, just check through the channel see if there's anything else you'd like. But, for right now, we have a very small knife to be reviewed right here. This is the Cold Steel Micro Recon 1 in the Tonto. This also came in the Spearpoint version. Now why did I say came in, not comes in? Because this is the original model. The current model, as I'm filming this July 2022, happens to be the 4th of July. Happy Independence Day, even though it's considerably later than that that you're watching this now. But regardless, this is the original version with the black Tough X coating. It's basically a, a Teflon variant, I believe, that they put on here, just like they put on the original Recon 1 as well. Even though saying original is kind of contradictory, there's a lot of a... It's a long story, I'll get into it in just a minute here, but this is the original Micro Recon 1 with the Tough X coating as well as the AUS 8A blade steel. Just like the full-size Recon 1 did have at the time, which is this one right here. This also has the AUS 8A blade steel. Later they changed it to CTS XHP, so they upgraded this one to the XHP and then made the Recon 1 Micro, gave the AUS 8A blade steel that this knife used to have to this one right here. Later, they changed it. The current version, anyway, I think this one is S35VN. Yes, the current model Recon 1 has the S35VN. So this went through two different blade steel changes. So it had three total different blade seals. And then before this one, we had the Cold Steel Recon 1 with the Ultralock. That's going pre-2009 or so. So this knife has gone through a handful of different changes. But at the time, this is the first micro recon one ever made anyway they stopped making these a few years back and the current model you can get is almost the exact same knife same shape same locking mechanism everything i'm showing you here is going to be the exact same thing on the new model recon one micro the big elephant in the room on it not that it, this is much of an elephant it's a very small knife is that the new model has the stone wash finish instead of this coating on it however i do believe there is a stone wash finish under this coating uh, don't ask me why it's a long story I'm not going to make this a super long knife review because it's a very small knife and there's not a whole lot to say about it, but I really like it. AUS 8A blade steel and the coating on there. The new model has the 4034 SS, which is a Krupp steel. Cheaper, yeah, it, it's, it's got kind of the performance around 420 HC, if not maybe a little worse than that, depending on the heat treatment, depending on who you talk to. But for a, such a small knife, it's not really that big of a deal. However, this original model, I like how they stuck the AUS 8A on there. It's a mid-grade good performing blade still for the money overall. And the triad locks on here, yeah. Even on this tiny little guy. One of the strongest locking mechanisms in the world. Yeah, on this tiny little thing, completely overbuilt. This is the most overbuilt mini folding knife probably in the world, honestly. It's it's extremely, extremely strong. As far as its vertical strength goes, you're not going to be able to beat that triad lock. And it's funny, it's kind of faithful to the full-size Recon 1. Also has that triad lock. Again, it's a smaller version of it. You can see the spine has similar useless milling in it, which is not accommodated by the lock bars. Your thumb just slips on over it, doesn't do anything. But it's there. You know, it's true to the original model. They're both rocking the backspacer right there. Again, we got the Tonto version right here. Both Tontos right here, but this also came in the spear point. It comes in the spear point anyway, if you want to talk about the new model, Micro Recon 1s. This one also had the drop point, or sorry, the clip point. This is also a clip point, as well as the other two, but they never made a clip micro recon one. This is kind of redundant for this size, I think, but I'm a Tonto guy. I prefer the Tonto. I prefer that stronger tip right there. Does it matter that much for a knife this size? Not really, but for opening packages, doing this motion, the slicing motion we're all familiar with, I like that second tip right there. I like Tontos a lot. Mostly, I just like them for the looks, but they are useful, too. Maybe not quite as useful as a drop point or a clip point, but they, they certainly have their uses. Really cool knife, no pocket clip, by the way, which kind of sucks. I kind of wish it had a little pocket clip. You could fit one on here, because look at look at the stubby little clips they use on these big old knives. Not that I don't, don't like them, I actually like the smaller clips, but you could certainly have fit that on here, but for whatever reason they just chose not to. I guess it was a weight issue, I don't know. That would have been cool, though, because I like carrying... Knives with pocket clips on them. That's the big reason I don't typically carry this, because I don't want it just freely floating around in my pocket. I feel like it's going to get lost. I know it's not going anywhere, but I just like them, you know, clipped to my pocket. Uh, this is very belated right now, but let me get the specs out of the way. Weighs 1.1 ounces. Blade length is 2 inches on the nose. Handle length 2.375 inches, making the overall length 4.375 inches. So it is a smaller than 5 inch knife. Closer to four inches. Well, the new model, the current model, as I'm filming this, 
retails at $31.99. You can get them all day long for about $25. Bucks. So this one, I'm going to say, is an upgrade because, again, we have a better blade steel. And then the coating, that's kind of up to preference. I would say the coating is an advantage because it makes it less prone to rusting. And then the blade's kind of lubed, so to speak, so it's easier to get into tighter areas. It's not really a big deal. It will scratch and wear on you over time. I've had this Recon one maybe the last seven years or so. I expect to pay about 25 bucks for the new model Micro Recon 1s. If you do find these new in box, you're probably going to be spending closer to 40 or 50 they're not terribly expensive or anything, but any new inbox old model knife is going to be a little pricier. That's just how it is. They're, they're discontinued, harder to find. Very comfortable for such a teeny tiny little knife. Really small. It's one of the smallest folding knives I have. Not the smallest, but it's almost there. Comfortable. I like these big old finger choils. Again, we have more milling in there in the handle. This is an FRN or Grivex handle, by the way. It is not G10. It is not the same handle material. The biggest way you can tell is by looking at the sides. It's kind of hard to tell because this is such an old knife. It's very well used. Lots of bits of crap and dirt are in there. The spines of the handles, I mean, you can see the layering on there. It's kind of going from left to right. The zigzag kind of color you see from the light. And then you'll notice the FRN or the Grivex on the left right here does not have that. One quick, easy way to tell the difference. FRN handle instead of a G10 handle. So it's going to be slightly lighter, slightly less strong, but it's really not a big deal. It's kind of just a preference thing. FRN is considerably cheaper, believe it or not, to produce, to, to work with. Go ahead and look up any knife that has two versions, like an FRN version and a G10 version, or knives that are similar in shape, size, locking mechanism, blade steel, especially, what have you, and compare them. You'll see pretty often that the ones with the G10 are considerably, I mean moderately, more expensive than the FRN version. It's kind of nuts, actually. So they put the FRN on this, and it actually mimics G10. This pattern they put on here kind of looks like a, a brick house or something. I like this pattern right here. You can see how it's raised there. It really feels like G10. It's really close. If you lied to me and said, hey, that's G10, I'd be like, yeah, that's G10. But it's not. It's not quite as aggressive as how G10 can get, but it's, it's, still, it's close. It's like a faux G10. I like it. For whatever reason, they just stuck it on these small knives instead of the actual G10, which is funny because right here, another interesting comparison, I have the Kershaw OD2, one of my favorite small EDC knives right here. There was an OD1, which is a bigger version, which was a frame lock and a had G10 handle scales. I have one, but I don't have it in front of the camera right now. I'm sorry. However, they did the exact same thing with this FRN as well. Super old knife too, by the way. Again, got to clean it. Dirt in there. Had this since 2012 or something, so it's been over a decade. But either way, same exact thing. A different pattern. Not quite as effective as far as grip goes. This is a little bit less grippy, but this is also an FRN handle. They stuck on the smaller version of that knife. Similar knife in length, almost, but it's just kind of funny. They stuck FRN on the smaller versions of each knife. So yeah, it's comfortable. You can flick it out <laughs> you know, with a little bit of practice. There's no pocket clip to brace your fingertips on, so it's just little tricky, but it's not really meant to be deployed quickly. Honestly, it's not really a big deal. I like the thumb studs on there. Again, staying true to the original Recon 1 that's lopsided. It's They're technically not dual thumb studs, although you can use them as dual thumb studs. You'll see one side is a little shorter than the other. Same deal on our full size, baby. It's just funny. It's literally like father and son. You know. There is the Mini Recon 1. I don't have that right now. But this, is, I guess, is like the toddler of the whole family. And then the Recon 1 XL. I would love to get one of those, but they're discontinued as well. Expensive, too. Yikes. People are asking three, 400 bucks for those things. New, yeesh. A lot of money. So there's not really a whole lot else to talk about. It's featherweight light. Again, we just have FRN handles, no steel liners. Very simple. Triad lock is extremely strong. Very simple knife. Very simple. I love the shape of it. We have a very abrupt arc right here, and then that fits the thumb... Right there, two big old finger choils for your index and middle finger. Ring finger kind of rests within this second choil right here. Half pokes in there, a little bit uncomfortable. It's kind of poking it into my hand right there. I think he's got nowhere to go. Luckily, they threw a lanyard hole in this, so you can throw a split ring on here to make it a keychain knife or something. Throw on your keys. You can also throw a big old lanyard on here or something if you wanted to, if you just wanted to get a little bit easier to grip onto out of your pocket, because again, we do not have a pocket clip. Pocket clip would have been a little redundant, though. I mean, it, it's kind of tricky to open this knife as it is with one hand. I mean, that, unless it's really in there. But you can practice with it. It's just... So what's really the point of this knife? Super strong, overbuilt keychain knife. You can throw this on your keys as a backup blade. I like having a knife on my keys as well. I want to cycle through different knives for that, for my key EDC anyway, but it, I have pretty much the perfect knife. I'll show you it in a minute, for me anyway. But 
This is basically the strongest keychain knife you're going to come across as far as folding knives are concerned. But this will also make a great backup blade. You can just throw it in your pocket. If you don't care about the split ring being thrown on there, you don't care about a lanyard on there, you don't really care. You just want to you know, kind of just dump that in your pocket and have it freely fro float around. Or maybe if you wear cargo pants and you have all these extra separate pockets with the Velcro on them, and you can throw this in one of those as well. Just please don't forget to have it on you because it might go through the wash many times. I've done that a lot with a lot of small little lightweight items that I eat. Say, I literally just forget they're on me and then I take off, okay, wallet, keys, phone, knife, flashlight, okay, take it all off. And I forget there's like four or five other tiny little things in my pockets and they go through the wash. Happens all the damn time. It's so annoying. I'm trying to get better about that, but don't know what else there is to really say about it. It's very comfortable for its size. It's going to be a very aggressive canting right here in Choils. Very comfortable overall for being such a small, slim knife. Again, triad lock. No news there. It's extremely strong. Good blade steel on this one, the AUS-8A for this size knife. That's excellent. Opening package is going to be just fine and dandy, but it's going to be a good backup backpacking blade as well. Again, you can throw a couple of these on you if you wanted in different spots in your backpacks, your pockets, pouches, whatever it is. Just as little backup blades, if you had to do some extra work, had to cut some things real quick, you needed to give a knife to a friend or something, and you wanted something really small that you could EDC and completely forget was on you, just as a little backup blade or a keychain blade, but you wanted it to be absolutely capable as well. That is where this Micro Recon 1 truly shines, and it's just really cool. So for 25 bucks for the new ones that are being sold anyway, little expensive uh you know you can get knives for around 25 bucks that are double the size i got a pocket clip same blade still same handle material pretty much same materials for double the size for that same price out there kind of pushing it a little bit i mean close to 30 dollar range but still it's a little pricey i would like to see this for like 15 bucks or hell even like 10 bucks that would have been cool but maybe that's me being a little bit too wishful for my thinking right there i don't know what the exact manufacturing process is for these things so i can't really say but from what i've seen compared to other size knives out there it's it's a little expensive for what you're getting it's a fair value but it's not a good value you're not like oh man you got to get like three of these things they cost like nothing they're kind of expensive for what you're getting the size they're just really really damn small for that price and even 25 but even 20 bucks is kind of pushing it a little bit but pretty much everything else is pretty good about it other than the fact that again no pocket clip i would have liked to see an inclusion of a pocket clip on there but it does not have one not a big deal if you're a huge Cold Steel fan, you owe it to yourself to get a Micro Recon 1. It's just cool to have a very strong, capable, tiny little knife. It's kind of an oxymoron. It's kind of an ironic knife in a way, which is it's just kind of cool. Overbuilt keychain knife. So again, let me pull out this OD2 one more time. This is an EDCable with a pocket clip. Hold an effort there. Again, it's, it's, it's just a little bit shorter than that, so maybe it would have been just a little bit too uncomfortable and cramped to carry and deploy normally if it were a pocket clip knife. But this is the current knife I still have on my keys. This one is very well executed. This is the Kershaw Cinder. One of my best friends sent me this one a long time ago. As you can see, it is well used. Used a lot. Did not clean it yet. It's got a gunk and crap on there. But, got a stone wash finish on there. Liner lock has a little bottle opener. FRN handles. We got little steel liners in there too, which is kind of neat actually for such a tiny little knife because it's for structural integrity for this size. I just like how this liner is so. It, there's such a gaping cutout in there. There's just so much exposure. It's very easy to open and close this thing with one hand despite being so teeny tiny. And that's really cool actually. No, it's not going to be as strong as the Recon 1 Micro. Hell no. No way. But. It's a very functional keychain knife. You got a big old lanyard hole right there. Bottle opener as well, again. So it doubles. Very comfortable. Get a, almost a full grip on here. My pinky's not gripping onto it, but everything else is. And again, if it's on your keys, who really cares that much? Sweet right there. Shorter blade. You know, less edge to work with. Actually, much, much, much less edge to work with. Almost the same as the Recon 1 Micro. It's just a little bit longer overall. But even then, I still like to carry the cinders a little bit more because it's easier to open and close with one hand. And you have the inclusion of the bottle opener right there. So I don't have to also carry a bottle opener on my keys. That being said, again, this is going to win in strength. It's kind of a novelty mini knife. You know, you're never going to... It's not enough knife to actually use to the point that you would actually disengage or break that locking mechanism. So it's kind of redundant, but again, it's very capable. If you want to do some really hard work and you just want an extra little knife on you that you'll forget is on you, this is the knife to go with. So there you go. Really cool knife. Awesome. I think it belongs in pretty much everyone's collection. Micro Recon 1.